here we were um, using the shop to generate feedback, testing the rivets, testing, you know, again, the, the holes. We did each one of these may have been from a different material because we wanted to see the way that they would bend and um, the way that the stitching would, we've done different versions in which there are, you know, a stitched seam cutting out every other, you know, so that it folds better and cleaner to a to an edge. We did versions in which the top was attached to the sheet, you know, looked at the efficiencies of, um, you know, optimization of the sheet that way. So uh, you can go to the next one. These are just images from the shop looking at, you know, folding in tabs and some uh, labeling perhaps, you know, uh, just to get feedback from. So you can actually see in the background some flat stock there as well. So we had two or three different laser cutters and we would be shopping around for a price to do the big job and so we would use our conversation with them up front to get some samples back and, <coughs> pardon me, so we would be saying, you know, we're looking at doing this many, this much square feet, can you give us a couple of, you know, stainless uh, or some aluminum? Mm. And uh, so you can go to the next slide. You can see how the voxels, you know, they fold together, the tabs get out of the way from each other. There's labels on the voxels themselves that, you know, help coordinate the set as it goes out uh, into the room that, or into the this? site. Yeah, could be, yeah, could be. Yeah. And um, and then the rivets, the holes aligned, they're all cut in the stock sheets. Um, so we're not post-drilling. You can see the burnout on the hole there. And um, the bottom on the right side has, uh, you know, does the work of binding the two tabs together. And uh, so you can go to the next one. And there you see a set, you know, that we put together in the studio again to have that full-scale relationship with... Um, you know, the secondary systems you'll see in a second as well. So we use this rig, which we generated as part of that problem setting to have conversations with our structural engineer, have conversations with our fabricators, have conversations with the client, and um, all the other secondary engineers. So this is the voxel layer. You can go to the next one. Uh, so once we had that set of voxels, moving, we started looking at the top surface and the bottom surface. Bottom surface for us was what we were calling the visual voxels, right? And because we had come up with uh, a bunch of feedback on how the shell should behave structurally and how it would work dimensionally and the set itself, we looked at this secondary layer as solving some of the, um, you know, inadequacies, let's call it, of the, of the shell, right? So there's a visual appeal to this layer. There's also some sound attenuation. There's some uh, texture and some color that we're getting into there. We're also looking at it as a secondary insulation layer. And another thing that we believe in is that though the relationship is you know, one to one, polygons that are in the structural voxel layer are tied to the visual voxel layer, you could, you'll see in subsequent slides, that we could change our material set and radically change the underside character of this. So it wants to be a swappable system. Essentially, if five years from now, Arthur, the client wants to change it out, he could um, you know, hire someone to make a, another version of this. And that's part of our whole principles for this particular property is change and, um, and intentional change. So you can go to the and next Just to slide. be clear, just want to make sure everyone's following because this is a super uh, interesting diagram. So this. This, this is the sort of obviously the, the, the upper layer that you're talking about. This is that visual voxel layer, right? And then this, this space in between here, this is the structural voxel that we just looked at here, right? So there's this. Next image is a, another. Yeah, 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 there, you, there go. you go. So you can see the little yeah. uh, system of tiles that goes on the outside, the concept of using a standoff there, which is, you know, tied back to the geometry. And... Uh, waterproofing layer, and then the voxels, and then the visual voxel, as you just mm -hmm. pointed out. Yep. Makes All right. Sense. So this section is just for reference, you know, with the glass and, um, and a long section through there showing the basic topography of the inside of these visual voxels. So you can go to the next slide. So these were early versions of, you know, digital renderings that showed some texture down there and some sense of how the visual voxels wanted to uh, 
manifest themselves, and then you see we did some carved on, we have a 5 by 10 CNC mill, and um, we used it to carve the foam on the upper right. We made our own versions of corrugated, you know, playing with concepts of color and texture. We did not hundreds, but probably, you know, 50 or 60 versions of these physical models that were, you know, kind of looking at the, the textural aspects of, of the visual voxels independent from the digital realm. So, you know, we're looking at the performative or the phenomenological characteristics of the ceiling surface and fishing for a set of attributes that we want to explore or exploit in the digital model. So, we can go to the next slide. These are um, <laughs> my alliteration moment. But you can see in here there's multiple different um, types of visual voxels. And in the later image, you'll see the digital rig that we use to generate the carved most left two you know, sets. So the one with the red and then the one higher up, which is smaller scale. Those guys were carved on our mill. Um, and the point is that the digital tools that we want to build have a... Um, uh, an extensibility, let's call it, you know, into, uh, so we can change the order of the spline, you know, and go from a smooth, higher version, a soft, smooth surface, no vertices whatsoever, to a very faceted and kind of almost uglified in the lower one with the red. You know, we were messing around with, like, noise and on these surfaces where we were getting, you know, sharper edges emerging and, um, You'll see different versions of that to the right as you go across, but you, some of them are carved, some were cast, some were um, heat formed over jigs, some are fabric, uh, some are cardboard. But all is a um, way of trying to get some texture, color, and topography into the underside of the bridge. So we can go to the next one is just a interim study of looking at minimally invasive again so how how could you do it in the cheap and cheerful version would be you know with a fabric that pulled back to a single point on the upper side of the um, structural voxel and using some LED pucks and things like that we are looking at creating a skin uh, fabric on frame and that would be very easy for us to do in house if we wanted to uh, the next image which you see is a version of one which would be done in milled uh, foam, you know, some built up aggregate milled foam pieces. But uh, so some were very deep, some were smaller and flat. 